Uh, Evansville, Indiana, 4724. What did your parents do? Uh, my dad was a Coca Cola salesman for about 45 years. And my uh, mother, she stayed home as a housewife. Yeah, I had a brother. Bruce Waterman was his name. Where did you go to school? Centennial. It's been torn down about 30 years. And I came up here to Wrights, four years up here. Yeah, uh, well, well, I had two years in the service, and I lived about a half a year in Mount Vernon the rest of the time here in Evansville, Indiana, and on the west side. What did you do growing up at Chris Arnn? Oh, I played uh, baseball, basketball, football, all kinds of sports. I never was an expert at it, but I had fun doing it. Uh, I liked to, liked to take hikes. Uh, f fish. I didn't like to hunt because I didn't like to kill the, the animals. I just d decided not to, didn't want to do that. And uh, I started working at uh, Coca Cola as a helper when I was 16. And, and then uh, that, that was about what I did mostly, just nothing real serious up until the end. And then uh, when I graduated from Wrights, of course, the war was on. And I got out in June of 42. I mean, it took me a couple of months to talk my mother into signing the papers for me, for me to uh, enlist in the Marines. So I enlisted in the Marines. And about a week later, we went down to Louisville, had another examination. And a doctor down there uh, kicked me out, said I wasn't physically fit to get in because when I was at Rice, I had two automobile wrecks and had a brain concussion and a skull fracture in one of them. So they said I couldn't go. So then I tried to enlist in every other Navy wouldn't take me either, except the Navy because I didn't like to swim. And uh, so finally, in January of 43, they drafted me on January the 16th. January the 23rd, I went in to Camp Atterbury up in Indianapolis. Stayed there for two weeks, then was shipped out to uh, Fort Lewis, Washington uh, in the tanks and uh, become a tank, tank driver for a while. And then uh, they, after, their, after about a year or so, they asked me if I wanted to go to ASTP Army Specialized Training Program and I said, Okay, then after I got there, they said if I stay there, I can't go back to my regular outfit. So I told them to, I didn't want to stay there anymore. So I went back to, to Fort Lewis, Washington, uh, Company A, 735th Tank Battalion. And uh, after there for, well, we shipped out to uh, England and I, be I became a sergeant tank commander in uh, 44. And uh, we shipped over to England, stayed over the England, trained in that. And then when they did the invasion of the France, I wasn't in the, the invasion to start with. I went in two weeks later. <clears throat> and uh, uh, we uh, just relieved the tanks and everybody that went in on D-Day. We relieved them on the line. And we held steady there on the line for a while. In July the 26th of 1944, that's when General Patton broke out of the hedgerows, and that's where I was with him. And uh, the 26th, I got hit about 11 o'clock on the morning the 26th. My tank got hit with 88, caught on fire. I jumped out with a machine gun. When I jumped out, they hit hand grenade, threw hand grenades, which hit me and spun me around. And then my other guys come out of the camp, out of the tank, got me. We ran ran down down the hill, down the hill, dove into some water. They got me back to the ditch, and they was kept firing at us all the time. And I was hit pretty bad, so I told them to put me in the ditch and cover me up, which they did. And uh, I laid there until eight o'clock in the morning, the 28th. They couldn't get back to me. And I come to pass out, come to pass out. So I wasn't in much pain. I didn't know anything about it. And uh, 
then we just, they finally, uh, staff sergeant for the infantry jumped down in the ditch and I happened to come to and see him. I hollered and he had some medics come across the field in a jeep and took me back to a first aid station and put me in there and uh, gave me blood and all that. And what they said saved my life is my all my shirt and uh, jacket had stuck into my wounds and stopped them from bleeding. And uh, they finally put me on an airplane after about two or three weeks and took me back to, flew me back to England. And uh, roughly a month later, while well, they was able to sew my wounds up and first, uh, first aid things, on, uh, I had hit from my hair on, on up and my arms and that. I had about 140 stitches put into me and uh, hit my face. I hit, hit in the eye and uh, so now also on my arm, they had a took four inches on my main blood vessel on my right arm because they had what they call a buzz bomb in there. They was afraid it would go through my heart. So they cut that out on my arm. And for about two years, all I did was walk around with a rubber ball and all that to try to get back and go to uh, the doctor three times a week for about a year and a half. And then uh, after that, I went went back to work. I, well, I was in the hospital altogether over six weeks, six months. And then uh, I went to work. And my I had still had shrapnel in my right eye, and it started hurting so bad I couldn't do anything. So they shipped me to put me on a plane to Indianapolis, removed my right eye, and put a plastic eye in. And uh, that more or less took care of it as far as that goes. And uh, then I, after I got to feeling better and everything like that, well, I came up to rights about uh, 40 years ago in the 60s. I've read. been up there ever since uh, in football. Started off the Cub level, freshman level, reserve, went up and helped on the varsity, and then started taking care of all the football equipment. So that's pretty well where it's at right now. <laughs> and I've enjoyed every minute of it, that's for sure. It's been fun. And 85, so I'm going to retire next year. Next year will be my last year. But I'll be up here raising heck with the coaches just for the fun of it. <laughs> if you want to ask anything else, fine. I don't know. <laughs> be honest with you, I wouldn't want to. Well, I, I, let's put it this way. I'm not going to say any of them's a favorite, if you don't mind. I, I don't. I liked him because he was rough and tough and back from the old school, not like it is now where, you know, you all went back there we used to say no pain, no gain. If you didn't hurt, then you wasn't putting out or anything. He was a very good coach. Excellent coach. He was tough. Back then, you didn't believe in giving kids water. You took a rock and put it in your mouth. And I never did play football. I never was good enough. And like I said, I had the injuries in the high school anyhow. So, but football was my favorite. I'll have to take that back. I played football in the Army. Tank helmet and GI boots was my equipment. And you get your nose busted and your mouth busted and all that stuff. But you figured you might die, so you didn't care. You just went out and did what you had to do. And uh, I know I changed the subject, but oh, he was a real good, like I said, coach and all that. And Coach Hart come in. He did a very good job. Uh, got to got to be real good friends with him. But I I guess in the long run. Uh, uh, Tony here. Uh, he was up here for nine years. Got to know him real well when he helped uh, Coach Gaddis and uh, Coach Hart. And uh, when uh, Coach Hart quit, he was one, he was my, one of my favorites to get the job. And uh, he he'll do an excellent job. Well, he has done an excellent job. Of course, he had the right material too. 
but uh, uh, this whole this whole bunch as a whole bunch of uh, coaches get along real well I think as well as any outfit that's ever been up there the coaches and uh, as far as favorite I'll just let it go with that <laughs> okay Well, for one thing, it's not just the football, but I enjoy the kids. I mean, they keep me still moving. Because if I, otherwise, I'd probably be home weighing about 280 pounds by now. But they keep me moving and all that. And uh, most of the kids are real nice kids. But they all got different, how do you want to say it, different personalities. Uh, some you can joke with, some you can't. Mostly I like to raise heck with some of them just for the fun of it. And then, of course, they raise heck back too as far as that goes. Uh, as far as favorites, uh, on kids, I, I, I've liked almost every, every one of them as far as that goes. I mean, uh, I believe in discipline, and uh, I believe if I tell somebody to do th something once or twice, that's all I should have to tell them. Uh, of course, I guess that's the Army training. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to regret leaving. And if it wouldn't be for my age, I wouldn't leave. I'd still be here longer. But uh, I don't quite get around as good as I used to. And in fact, I never thought I'd live to be 85 anyhow. So, But I've enjoyed every bit of it. Wright High School, to me, is just a, another high school in the country like it. Uh, at one time, I had a chance to go to New York. And went with my job, and I teased him and said, I can't take rights with me, so I'm not going. So I, that's just the way I look at it. I just, just like where I'm at, I like Rights High School, and I wouldn't want to change anything about it. What does the two state championships mean to you? I think that's excellent. I mean, these, uh, we used to have what you'd call, you know, uh, they, they, if, you, if, if, the coach, if the coaches and the and, uh, news writers raised you back, then you was to be the, a champion. But to go out and earn it on the battle, battlefield is what I call it. I think it's wonderful. And this short a time, to you two out of three. Uh, of course, you have to have the right kids to do it. But 15 and 0 and tw old, old 7 and 15 and 0 and 09, that's wonderful. And I'll wear both rings at the same time, just to let them see them. And I think it's wonderful for the, for the school, for the west side, especially the west side. I wouldn't want to live on the east side. I'm right where I want to be.